Hey team, it was so great to see you on Saturday. It was nice to meet some of you for the very first time and it was great to reconnect with some of you. Thank you for showing up vulnerably. Thank you for showing up fully and being engaged in the conversation. I always walk away from these luncheons and dinners with my cup full as a result. Um, I noticed that one of the through lines or one of the subjects that kept coming up uh, and what I heard at the lunch was how to stay focused and how to stay motivated. Many of you expressed that you're in a place of transition. Some of you are thinking about leaving a job. Some of you are thinking about building a personal brand. Some of you are thinking of returning back to your roots. Maybe it's art. And so how do we stay focused as well as motivated? And I follow a great Instagram account by an Australian man, man named Joe Duncan, and he published a productivity post on his Instagram account, which is called Before 5 a.m. And I wanted to share some of the things that he suggests for staying focused and for staying motivated. So number one, and we talked about this uh, quite a bit when we were at the luncheon, is saying no. And that's not saying no forever but it's saying no for now. So for the next six months, if you need to do a deep dive into what it is that you want that next chapter to look like, you deserve, it, those goals deserve time and they deserve some space. So what can you do to kind of clear the calendar of all of your distractions, all of those social invites in order for you to be able to reach that goal? So saying no, but it doesn't have to be forever. A side note, you know, we talked about the fact that saying no dings our likability, but I find that people often respect you more when you have boundaries and you say, I have a specific goal that I need to meet. Let's revisit this in April. And if they're serious about wanting to get together with you, they will come back to you in April or May or whenever and, and want to have that coffee with you. Number two is to review your goals daily and set action items. Um, I have a vision board and I look at it daily. And on that vision board is nine images of what I want to have happen in the next three to six months. But it's not enough to just have those images up there. I also have next to it a list of three or five action items that I need to take daily in order to actualize those images. So for example, if you know, having a passive income stream is one of my goals. What can I do to productize my business? What can I do to have more affiliate relationships so some of that affiliate income can come in? So you review your goals daily. I think a vision board is a great way to do that so you have a visual reminder of what it is that your goals are and then think about some action items that you can do to move, move that uh, goal forward, move the needle forward daily. Number three is to focus on production and not perfection. Yolanda talked a little bit about how her perfectionism was getting in the way of her kind of getting back into the studio and painting first thing in the morning because she was thinking a lot about other people's priorities. And, and it's fair because she's also teaching. But what can you do to focus on the production as opposed to letting the perfectionism get in the way? Think about the um, satisfaction that you get when you look at your list of the three things you wanted to get done today and they're crossed off the list. Don't you feel so productive? So if you can be very intentional about setting that time, maybe even the night before, which is when I like to do it, about what's the three things tomorrow that's going to move the needle on my business and focus on the production as opposed to the perfection, I'd be curious to see where you are in three to six months because if you do that every single day, at the six month mark, you're gonna be so much further along than you were just sitting around thinking about it. Make your goals part of your lifestyle. I think one of my biggest frustrations when I was on TV and getting up at 2.30 in the morning is that I really couldn't take good care of myself. And so now that I'm an entrepreneur, I have committed to getting up every morning at 5.30 and being at the gym at six. I did this even when I was in DC because it's become part of my lifestyle. It's like brushing my teeth. Six to seven in the morning is when I take care of myself. So what can you do to think about your goals, whether it's art, whether it's thinking about the next chapter of your life, whether it's building your personal brand, and how can that become part of your lifestyle. Tip number five is self-care. Um, you don't have any of this if you don't have your health. So what can you do every day to make sure that a little bit of self-care wedges its way into your schedule? I'm really feeling the effects of having run down to DC and back in, in a weekend and, and in the schedule being very hectic. So I've scheduled a massage for myself at six o'clock today. I'm going to be very intentional about making sure that self-care finds its way into my schedule. 
And then number five, and this is something that I'm really working on, is to measure and track your performance. What kind of metrics or KPIs can you put around your goals and how can you measure if you are actually, in fact, making progress on spending more time in your studio producing art or spending time mentoring others or um, building that personal brand like what does it mean to be able to measure and track that because that's the only way you're going to know that you're making steps forward so I'm now working with a business coach and we are going to be taking a deep dive into my um, 2020 numbers and laying out a 30 60 90 day plan and putting in ways to measure whether or not I am moving towards my 2022 goals I um, have a workshop this week with an executive coach who is excellent, and she is going to be talking about how to mind map to your fourth quarter goals. If you would like to be uh, a part of that, it's a 90-minute workshop on Thursday, October 7th, and if you would like to be a part of that, just DM me, and I would love to invite you as my guest to join. Um, I'm going to say farewell for now, and until the next time I see you in Washington, D.C., have a beautiful Monday.